Welcome everyone to another RGL cast. My name is Jared. I'm here with Space Ghost to bring you guys Global Clan Fire vs. Rome. This is RGL Invite 6's Season 13, Stage 1, Round 3, basically Week 1. And not too many matches have been played this season. We're still getting into it a couple weeks in, but uh, slowly and surely we'll start to get uh, nails on the board and we'll start to get some wins and losses under all these teams' belts. Both these teams only really played one match. They've had a uh, little to show for in terms of displaying their skill level. Global Clan Fire almost had a victory over Froyotech weeks prior when they had a bit of a, bit of a curious roster. So we'll, think, we'll see how things shake out when you have a team that, you know, broke into playoffs last season and made some shuffles with their roster and is trying to do just the same. While Rome's trying to get their comeback after last season's performance, probably not too well for, uh, for Rome fans with, I think they didn't quite... Uh, find any victories but i'm sure with the shuffle of teams and players and a new season new you aspect are looking to get more than just uh you know they mean they've already done it they've already gotten a victory so far this season so they're on the up and up and we'll see what happens when they clash with uh, last season's playoff participants we'll definitely have to see how things are going to shake out now early on in the season hopes are high you can make dreams of you know making playoffs or you know having some having a nice season but you have to win the matches first or things could come crashing down as you know people are slowly starting to fill in the server a lot of the rome boys are still in here but maybe before we get started perhaps a roster or two yep that's probably a, a good idea the rome roster is actually pretty straightforward it's only going to be one change in terms of uh comparing the you know last season to this season you have darty and Vio on scout scumbag steve and frisbee on soldier mig 21 bis on demo and gadili on medic and for the side of Global Clan Fire, we got KJ Quad, aka Ed, everyone's favorite, on Plank Scout. We got Fancy Sun on Scout. We got Saxophone and Wonder on Soldier, Averted on Demoman, and Divine on Medic. Yep, so both these teams playing with. They're playing with uh, familiar rosters in terms of the, the players that they're used to playing with, but Global Clan Fire definitely had way more of a shakeup in terms of uh, getting some players together, switching classes, you know. I think the combo is completely different Spare Divine in terms of what you were seeing uh, on their, their playoff run last season. So we'll see how things shake out. I mean, so far they had a good uh, presentation, but uh, you know, every team plays a little bit differently. You gotta get make sure, you gotta make sure that you're used to playing all these different play styles that teams can come out with, especially if you're in an environment where like, you know, it's early in the season, especially with everyone traveling for land and stuff and not scrimming, you know. You probably haven't played every single team at least once yet, so you don't really know their vibe. So, you know, the first couple of weeks of, uh, of the season can be pretty chaotic in terms of knowing, like, what the te a team is about and trying to figure out how to hard counter them. And that could play into Rome's advantage as seen as the underdog. You know, they've already got their, their first victory. I think that's more than they did last season. Like I said in the beginning of the cast, they're, you know, trying to get even more and trying to make their dreams a reality, maybe make playoffs, or if not, at least get as close as possible as they can. And getting a win versus a Global Clan Fire would certainly set a message to the other teams that, uh, you know, they're they're not a joke. They 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 took that season, they learned from it, and now they're here, you know, a force to be reckoned with and, and trying to collect as many rounds on the board as possible. Most definitely. it's I, I personally am pretty excited to see what Roman Global Clan Fire can bring out the season, especially Rome. I think, uh, I think this is one of the seasons where expect this. Like, I think that would be fair to say Rome has been kind of one of those like low invite kind of bubble teams at the you know, bottom of invite. But I think these are the seasons you kind of expect to see like improvement. You know what I mean? You expect to see those wins coming off of the other low invite teams and moving up to be more of a you know, mid invite team. And uh, Rome already getting one win on the board definitely helps with that. And, and I think uh, they're going to get to this one. Looking to see if they can shake things up. I think Global Clan Fire are going to be coming in here as the favorites. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, I definitely say it's pretty safe. Uh, they, I mean, even though it is a shakeup in terms of like Wonder's going back to Soldier, but that's his main. Uh, Fancy Sun, uh, you know, I don't think we've seen him play Scout really ever in like in league play, at least in invite. So he's kind of making his debut in that aspect. Averted's back after taking. I guess he didn't really take a season off, but back with this group. You know, people did play differently. You got to get used to. To different play styles but uh it's probably not too much for him to shake off to get back with his original gang so you know maybe maybe there's, there's some some holes here for for room to take advantage of when it comes to like you know in, in having a, a good shot as the underdogs but uh it's not so much so that i think you would really you know say differently than global Clan fire being kind of the favorites uh it is snake water 
is going to be the map that's played pretty standard for the most part. We have seen some occasional weird snake water matches, either ones that go kind of slow or ones that, you know, stalemate on certain points because the team is like, oh, they're really good at mids, but they can't break last for some reason, so they aren't able to really create a lead, you know, stuff like that. So uh, pretty standard, but still some, some flavor to be had in terms of trying to figure out play styles. Um, I'm actually not really sure how the teams are going to play per se in terms of their pace. I think for the most part it's safe to say that teams will try to not to, you know, they're not going to play too slow because of the config obviously. If you do really well and you know, but you only get to last and you can barely break it, then it's kind of a waste. So I think we kind of expect to see some faster paced gameplay, but I'm not really sure uh, how they're going to do it in terms of, you know, trying to break the stalemates, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but we do have the map bands on the screen, so you can kind of see if there's a, a pattern to be seen, and I, I think there there very much is when it comes to these bands. I believe uh, this season, correct me if I'm wrong, there's more than just product as the call, right? We do have Beagle. So in that case, uh, Beagle, I think so, yeah. yeah in, that case, in that case, Beagle was on the board, it looks like. But I'm lucky to go Snake Water instead, and honestly, I don't blame it. I could see that, uh, you know, maybe Global Fire. Wanna... You probably Beagle don't want to play Beagle against Fire. Yeah, especially they have some pretty high DM players. Like they have Ed, who's you know pretty. Uh, I, I think one of the you know, main players on Global Clan Fire, one of the main players to be feared. And Sax is very scary on Beagle as well. Yeah, but they, they, but they these are themed. Standouts. These are extremely themed. When yeah, one it came team, to who one team banned, banned a lot of the scout maps, and one team banned a lot of the scout sad maps. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So both teams know their path to victory, and I think with Snakewater, both teams are okay with the result, I would imagine, which is probably what you would expect when it comes to a pick ban. The last match remaining are kind of like, both teams are like, eh, whatever, because, you know, every every class kind of has their moments where they can kind of shine on this map, but obviously it can be very snowball-y where you can't really do your job if, you know, you're kind of locked down because of someone else, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so... We can kind of see how things progress over the mid fights and the way people try to break the stalemates and and all that. But uh, I think are we going to a different server? What's happening? Global Clan Fire are not joining this server. I'm actually a little curious. Um, I'm not sure about the server, but oh, there, oh, there was people. there was just an update. Is the thing like literally? Yeah, there was. Literally, might... right right after I was trying to fix my HUD and was using the Highlander match that just ended. I was using that server to try to fix it. Uh, and I restarted my game once to try to fix things and try to get back into that server like five minutes after it ended. And I was like, sorry, the server you're, you're trying to join is running an older version of the game. And I looked, it's like, oh, I downloaded like a, I downloaded an extremely small TF2 update. So like, I got to gotta fix the, the, the hat localization or whatever. I they don't did. know if, may, well, the thing is, is, I don't know if Rome just like scrimmed the whole time and then like didn't restart the server, didn't restart their games. And now like Global Clan Fire is like, restart it, fix it. Yeah. Someone, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Or like that, their server has been going since, like, since before the update, and now if they have to like reset the map to reset everything, it's gonna, you know, then they have to their server uh, providers to download the map. All kinds of fun TF2 shenanigans yeah. from updates. But uh, Bird is joining now. It was okay. slowly making progress. Yeah, we are. I was actually thinking back we to when I said scores, though. The scout. I was actually thinking about when not really necessarily re related. To snake water but going back to the looking at the map and sultry i feel like sultry has been in the pool long enough that you know the meta's progressed on that would you say sultry is more of a sad scout map i don't i don't know or is it like a i feel like it can't be that bad of a scout map it's pretty huge uh i mean it's pretty huge it could be worse realistically <laughs> it could be uh, worse I think, okay like you know, <laughs> i don't i don't i mean i guess I don't, no, too, that's it's not necessarily a playground per se but it's not like you're unable to do anything at yeah. all like i guess being depends. huge doesn't matter yeah because greater is also kind of big that's it's a, it's yeah. new enough where everyone's going to have slightly different experiences based on like, you know, everyone has only played so much Sultry in their TF2 career, so that little pool that an individual is pulling from is going to be way different than everyone else. Like, what if your Sultry experience has only ever been like the teams that you knew you were going to roll? You played yeah, Sultry yeah. because there was that was the only map where you could get anything worthwhile. And then all the teams that were, you were way, like, it are way better than you is like, why are we going to get rolled on them on Sultry where we can actually, like, play, like, map that you know we've played tons of times and need to yeah. get you know uh, experience on so it, it can be hard to really say like people's opinions might differ a bit but i will say it is still probably the upset map of the the pool just because of yeah. the whole inexperience thing people don't have things locked down as much there's a couple interesting strategies that you might have to get used to with wraps and last souls etc cetera, etc cetera. but scores it is time to talk about scores as global clan fire has finally joined the server 
Wonder is, is, is probably returned. Actually, Wonder hasn't even returned yet. He's probably the one that's AFK. Wonder always takes forever. Ah, <laughs> um, uh, see that guy? There's always a one. Yeah. But there's uh, also, they have returned. Yeah. We need to talk about scores. Also, I think Loaf is substituting for someone. Loaf with an Loaf E? My goodness. Loaf joined the server. Loaf with an E. That'd be exciting. Our, 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 everyone's good friend, Loaf. Uh, oh, it's probably literally Wonder that's not here. Like, he's not just like, oh, AFK, let me go to the bathroom and uh, join late. Okay. I think Wonder might just straight up not be here. He has to travel a lot. Uh, oh, so he okay, probably, okay. yeah, he probably literally is not at his home. So, Loaf's playing, I guess. That's being on, as late as he can possibly be, actually. Very, yeah, very, uh, yeah. yeah, for real. <laughs> so, that does make sense. We do have predictions up on the board with our nice, beautiful Comic Sans font. Love to see it. As a Global Clan Fire, as we kind of expected, is. You know, I, I think they'd be considered the favorites here, but I want to call an overwhelming favorite, especially this early on in the season and with potentially being down a uh, wonder. I think Loaf substitute in, you know, there could be a uh, room for some Rome shenanigans. Yeah, I think the thing about this match is I don't know. I feel like Global Clan Fire are the favorites. I don't know how much of the favorites they're going to be to affect uh, one's ability to like actually reach five rounds. You know, I think the timer yeah. will probably kick in. I would, I would imagine. Um, I feel like it'll be close-ish. Uh, you know, Rome probably still has some fire in them, despite not having the, the fire in their team name. I'll say like a a, a four-one for Global Clan Fire. I think Rome has some, you know, they have some good stuff in them, but uh, it's going to be really difficult. So we'll see what they're going to pull out. Do you think it's going to be like a mid the last kind of round or just a, uh, you know, just just one of those, you know, solid, just kind of slowly we work your way back to a uh, last kind of deal? I think uh, it's either going to be like a f the first mid type of deal or it's going to be like a, a like a spy play type of yeah. deal. I, I'm sure we, we've cast a lot of the matches where it's like, one team wins mid and just steamrolls the last, and the other team, like, they they crawl, they inch their way, like, over the course of 10 minutes from their last mm -hmm. to the other last and get around, and then they just get rolled the next two rounds, and it's like a 5-1. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I don't know what to make of that. They had one round where they looked like a real TF2 team, and then they just got rolled mid the last, so. Kind of hard. I, I'm getting, like, in just a sense that that might be the case, but we'll see. I, uh... I think that Rome might have some surprises for us, but I'm going to actually say, let's make it like a 3-0 for uh, GCF, I'll say. I think this one might take a bit. Snakewater last can be a little tricky. Mm -hmm. That is fair. I think I've seen, especially because this is like partially the team that I played on last season, there is a chance that Global Clan Fire might have some issues breaking <laughs> the stalemates and on last in particular in a timely manner. Like, they'll, they could get there, but it might, like, take them the whole five minutes to do something. Yeah, and then they get, time like, off one the push. On the same vein, though, from what we've seen of Rome last season, I mean, obviously, you know, as time goes on, things will change. But from what we've seen last season of Rome, I don't think their mid-fight adjustments have been extremely strong. I think I've seen them try to change the way they play their mid-fights, like, based on what's being thrown at them, and they fail to, like, execute, like, anything to make it different. So that's going to be... I think th that's my predictions on what these teams would probably need to, like, overcome when it came to any hurdles. GCF needs to make sure that if they get to last, they can actually secure it, and Rome needs to make sure that if they change something on mid, that it actually leads to a different result. Yeah. These are the big things I'm looking for. Okay. Those are two good things to look out for, but while we wait, we do have something new and exciting for you. We do have team merch. So, uh, going into, you know, after the game, or maybe even during the game if you're so inclined, if you want to support your favorite team, we have some team merch there with all the teams that have got their nice logos on there, and they actually do look pretty nice, you know? Or, uh, like we said in the previous cast, I think they qualify as where, you know, I would wear that in public, which is a very high compliment. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the, that's one of the, I think some, that's something that people look for is like, you know. I don't want to reveal uh, my wanna, power level. Yeah, I want a shirt that looks cool, but only minimalize a conversation starter, you know? That type yeah. of deal. But and uh, that's something that like just screams like I you know I like on online nerd stuff. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think it's cool. Everyone's got their own team merch now. Especially it's especially good when it comes to teams that are like you know you recognize a team name before. It's not like it just pops up one time and it's like oh that, that team's gone next season. But like you know there's plenty of of teams that like 
exist in some way, shape, or form and reuse the same name. So there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the team shirts and, and what have you are, uh, are pretty good. So, yeah, they are pretty yeah. good. I do like them a lot. You know, pick up a Global Clan Fire shirt, pick up a Rome shirt. Maybe in the future, you know, some of the bandits can pick up some of Freo Tech shirt. All kinds of exciting possibilities uh, for the team merch. And we do have also other t-shirts in the store. They're pretty nice. They are also qualify as a uh, look pretty cool. And, uh, you know, don't reveal your power level. So check those mm -hmm. out as well if you uh, have the opportunity. But I suppose I love those stickers. The stickers look neat. Yeah, the stickers are pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not a sticker guy myself, but I could definitely see the appeal of them. Especially, I like the map ones. The map ones are actually kind of neat. It's like you've been there, you know what I mean? I think being a sticker person is just 100% hinged on do you have things to place stickers on. Like, if you're That's someone true. who... If you're like a, I have my PC on my, on my desk and not under my desk type of person, or if you're like, I have like a very large like water bottle that has tons of negative space on it. I think if you have if you're one of those two people, then you're more inclined to be a sticker person because you see all this empty space and you're like, oh, well, why not? Like, you know, well, some people see empty space and they like, they like to fill that space. And some people just have like a, like a folding chair and like a TV on the floor in their living room. And they're like, no, that's chill. And it just yeah, depends I on mean, the personality. I, I'm one of the lighter type. Yeah. You know, some people just, you know, they pull up, they're like, hey guys, I just moved in, and they, you, there's like three objects in the entire room, and they're, and it just stays like that. I, uh, I get that, but... I, I think cool. I would be a sticker person, I just don't actually have anywhere to put stickers. I'm definitely like, not. I, I, I lived in a room before that had mattress on the floor and, like, computer, and that's literally it. Very minimalist. Yeah, you it's, got, uh, You got what you need. Ex exactly. It's one of the things you posted, you say, like, you know, men only, please respond. What do you think of my room? <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's see. I think someone has left, but I think we are. We, we I think we are. We are at like a minute before the game starts because you know it's STB. We get the heads ups. It is actually on, like no lie, starting within sixty seconds, so that's good news. So there's your, here's your last call if you needed to go do something really quick. You have a, like a very small window of time before you get things going. I have uh, to do something. I have to cast EF2 true all right final final call as a resident sniper player how much do you think we're gonna see it tonight Ooh, i don't know hmm besides last that's kind of a given yeah besides last i i'm expecting a nice little over like two or three lives maybe like a nice little sniper in a second for or mid forwards nice little uh, maybe sniper on um defending second as well no like mid forward one life on sniper second and i wonder's here Loaf got, okay. loaf got gigabated. Oh, I guess loaf. Wonder was like, I'm gonna be late, I'm not gonna be in time for the match, just get loaf, and then it takes so long to start the classic that uh, that Wonder's like, hey, yeah. I'm here now. Well, see, that's how it works. The second you get the ringer, your main shows up. That's why I get my ringer as soon as possible so my main shows up faster. Yeah, that, that's that's completely literally how necessary. it works. It was all part of the plan. But yeah, uh, I, we... I'm not even I'm not even like doing that as a joke. I genuinely believe that. It, it, that's just how the universe works. Yeah, but we are live between Global Clone Fire and Rome heading over to the first mid. Both demos have arrived. Actually, both demos. Okay, no, there. He's in lower. Mig running Quickie Bomb. That's something I forgot. He likes throwing Quickie Bomb on Snake Water. I mean, they're uh, quick. Said, that's pretty good. That makes yeah, sense. And hitting the trying to hit them and knock them down a little bit in the HP department. Lower uh, clip though, so we'll see if that ends up being a uh, a pain. To have to deal with a bit of soldier bomb in. Let's come back to you going on over to popping up there. Chris, trying to follow Ooh. up. They've gotten rid of a lot of the explosive classes out of the server. You might be the first to fall on the side of the right team when it came to the projectile or on the scout side of things, but no, we already falling over on the side. Frizzy still in mid, trying to get a rock on a divine. The rock came out, maybe could have killed him, but will live with 70 HP. Ch oh, trying Vio to chase might down be a little and he's getting... They are so weak, he is eating all the spam in the world, but will get building. out to resup. They still have their uber intact. They've lost the mid, but they still are holding on, building up a gun on last. They took so much spam leaving, they actually built really well, because they were just like permanently hurt, which I, I guess that's a bonus, you're on, you're on last, but can't really push out of last. You see our first sniper of the game speaking, of which we got Vio on sniper, which uh, on stake water last, you know, it is pretty powerful. It's one of the better sniper apps, in my opinion. But even Ubers, it's all up on Global Clan Fire to try to break the stalemate. And uh, this could be a little bit of a trick run, so we'll see what they want to do. Right now, they are just in lower kind of standard, trying to get this gun. And a little bit of a close call there for sacks, but not going to happen in the end. And yeah, looks like they're going to approach this one, but we have to see how they actually want to. Uh, <laughs> sacks is trying to peek, and it's not, it's not meant to be. 
Yeah, that's their one man sack technically as they try to escape through lower and get out and they will succeed Rome, you know, trying to they're trying to be on the chase a little bit. Frisbee looking like he might go in. Will indeed commit, will get completely smashed by the side of Global Planet Fire who were they had were bundled up all around that crate, so immediately it wasn't able to really get too much done there. But uh still holding on the last realm, at least they have that going for them. The clock's going down, have still have the sniper, still have the gun, and wonder taking a bit of damage, trying to find a way to get in and get this gun down. They can't even spam the gun. With the, yeah, that's the thing, is with the sniper and the soldier, it's really hard. Even if you got that gun, you're not going to be able to do anything else because you're probably going to lose your life or be way too weak. So uh, I, I, think I think yeah. I'd I, like to see them. Rome is not that aggressive uh, up until now where Rubio is like poking in the lobby. I feel like I'd like to see, oh, okay, yeah, either that, a two-man, or they need to rotate averted away and like put him on the combo to help stand the gun instead. I don't think they have good pressures on the, the door, and I think they did a decent job playing around their sniper there. Maybe it was just like, oh, the sniper had two shots, but uh, I think they did a decent job with the doors. But Frisbee actually going to be behind. We're going to have a Wonder trying to hit the air shot, unable to. Frisbee's just going to land directly next to the medic and unable to hit in. the next rocket off. And Divine oh. milking that quite well. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good start from the side of. Uh, a frisbee completely baited wonder away from divine and divine was left alone got some damage off but not quite enough and vo it thought it could maybe get the pistol but uh around the corner divine goes just milking it and uh that's gonna be two down frisbee's up now but he's not quite at the doors yet to spam and they're gonna use that opening sack going it over to the side of the spawn drawing some eyes getting some damage on the soldiers not quite uh room to uh, distract for the rest of the team though as the gun is still up it's actually getting moved right now as Sax falls, they're kind of poking around, scumbag Steven lower, might jump through lower if he so decides, but it appears like they're not really going for anything yet. They know that uh, there's only oh, there so much time left. Oh no, Vio was going for a miracle shot, Ooh, but he, he lived. just died. How? Oh, barely. How? I, he was HP. A, a wonder, almost thought about going for it. Vio types a thank you in chat as, it's been pretty slow boat so far, but Rome has been steadily taking away at the time here, only a minute 15 left. For Global Clan Fire to figure out a way to push. They gotta get something to happen sometime sooner. They're gonna get sent yeah. back to mid. They do have the offensive sniper that's sort of trying to work with with KJ Claude, oh, aka Ed. They're gonna Uber Exchange, maybe. They're probably gonna Uber Exchange, but you know, Ed's on sniper and they're gonna be trying to peek through. They're gonna have to Uber Exchange and just play off the sniper for the post, which isn't the worst idea, but you know, they're already down a player. And there's gonna be a soldier in. Scuba Steve Ed's is sniper. actually gonna get the force. Yeah, so a combination of things, Ed winning the SVS, but at the same time, Divine getting bombed in the force coming out, no one really watching lower at the core right moment. Uh, so uh, I think lingering in lobby a little bit too much after you lost Zax is going to be the thing that bites the bullet bears. Actually, Rome, you, they, they found their opening, push but do you push out? It depends. How confident are you in your mid-fights? If you think your mid-fights are on lock, then you can just go for a re uh, round reset and you'll get way more ground. But if you're not as confident, then uh, you might want to consider actually taking this opportunity to push out of last. You've only seen one mid. But it's up to Rome to decide like how much do they trust their they're, they're gonna have to use to get out here, right? And it's gonna be a leapfrog in a scary spot. How yeah. much are you confident in your mid fights? And Rome says we're confident. They have their Uber, it's still add, they don't even need to use it barely, and yeah, <laughs> stalemate out. So Rome is making the decision. We will, they're saying, hey, we will get way more ground if we just stalemate. We'll play the mid, we'll we can try to win the mid, and we'll could maybe even be at their last at the end of this rather than our own too. So we'll see how that play works out for them pretty ballsy early on when you're not really sure like too much on what global clone fire is bringing to the table but at the end of the day i mean it's e there's only two sides of it either you go for it or you don't and they're really going for it so we'll see how this mid plays out i think they were a little scared to push out too because there's a sniper which means that you could just instantly have your push be over and that's mm -hmm. not something you want to deal so i think that might be a little bit of it too but you see the quickie bell launcher on a uh, averted here for the mid that's for and i'm sorry not for averted for big 21 bis as a lot of more high ground from from the oh, first kind of fire again. There's a gonna be so a nice damage. bomb there. Wonder got so much damage off, but they're gonna get the pack, but the damage is gonna stream in for the side of Global Fan Fire. They're gonna be able to get the kills. Nice little three for three here, but Red Team does have a medic. Blue team does not, but the space. Red has two scouts, but no space, and <laughs> blue team has two scouts and a demo then. So and it looks like it's gonna oh, actually gonna be. Oh, they're coming back in. They're Global Fan Fire. Their they're so, so hard, hurt. That was a nice attempt for Global Fan Fire, but I didn't do too much as uh, they're gonna get right. caught out in a nice Control attempt for Global Clan Fire. They bought some time, make sure they're not gonna immediately lose. But Rome with full Uber at going into tapping mid and can at least try to get second. Yeah, the uh, 
The beginning was really shaky for Rome. They were eating so much damage on their own right side half of the map and on top of the hut. They even lost those players because of it, but I think Global Clone Fire were a bit too frag hungry. They kind of left Divine exposed and uh, him dying there is going to be the nail in the coffin for that mid-fight for them as Rome were able to. Even though they lost the players initially and were starting to bleed out pretty heavily, the fact that Kadili was able to stay alive means that they used the heals to just win the slow fight and Global Clone Fire were unable to prosper. So. The coin is flipped over, and we actually see an uber push going in, taking out the gun immediately, going to the other side of the point, maybe teasing it. Yeah, Vio getting on top of it, trying to bait the soldiers over, gets wonder over, immediately melted. That's a pain train soldier. Yeah, that is a pain train soldier. Scumbag Steve on top of it, and that is way too much cap time. Rome, take the first round. They do take the first round, and the pain train soldier kind of worked out there, because the scout baited the point, and he had to get off, but then the soldier just bombs the point, which is a little bit of a you know unorthodox strategy, but it works. You know, times two in the point, more... And that's going to be first round in the side of Rome. Not Maybe not what a lot of people expected, but we could be in for a banger here tonight, Jarrett. Yeah, we'll have to see how things transpire. Global Clone Fire seemed pretty okay for the mid, just leaving Divine alone at the wrong moment gave an opportunity for players to come in and kill him. And that medic frag going to be huge on these long, drawn-out mid fights. And, you know, once again, the spam is in favor of Global Clan Fire. Rome are pretty weak, but they got to make sure if they're going to go for a frag, they don't leave people exposed. Bomb coming in from Scumbag Seed. Divine pop in the air. They're stacking both floors to make sure that medic dies. And There's three replaying. people in the wrong lower. They're replaying the strategy of the last mid because it works so well. Give up some players, but make sure that Divine dies. Play a long drawn out mid and use the heal advantage. But Global Clan Fire, they recognize they have some players. They've collected some packs. They can lock out the side of Rome. And Rome, I think, very smartly recognize that they have to go ahead and concede the mid cap, even if it means, you know, you know. They, it's fine because they can they're just gonna get mid off of it day. though which is at least a good start divine is kind of waddling right at last he but he's gonna get forwards and divine's gonna be here at least for the push but there are Overrated. multiple players behind multiple players behind and this could be a pinch if they're not careful if they want to push this without a demo although they might just end up dying is they're gonna get sacks and ed is still behind he's gonna try to make his way out but darty is gonna be hit or maybe darty isn't and, oh ed kitty oh no miracles can happen so they're gonna be down to three for the potential second fight here, and that might be a back to last. Yeah, not only were they really good at recognizing that even though the Divine was nowhere near there, they could at least catch averted, which is really good. They got over with the Uber, and then they completely forwarded the two man running behind. The, I think uh, Ed and Sax found two other players. Oh, Averted might be caught up. Averted? Averted's just gonna die on last. He's caught the, rest, the rest of his team is just hiding in the spawn, and that's gonna be an early demo pick and might be a easy last push if they're not careful. That's a huge minute communication. That's a demo man that's expecting a, oh, a, a, like a stalemate hold because it's even Ubers versus a team that is like holding back until they actually get. So maybe a small calm error there is going to make them but lose a demo. But lose Rome, three. Too, too overzealous. They got that demo man pick, but the execution afterwards is not what it needs to be to be able to actually secure last. Saxophone trying to go in deep, but Rome already out. Lost too many. Have to hide till out of there. Give up two for free. And with the demo man being blocked out of spawns, Global Clan Fire, this is your opportunity to actually push, even if it was a they stalemate fast, right yeah. now. You can just There's pick no a door. Yeah, pick yeah, door. Yeah, gonna get through the door. They are holding close, so there's gonna be an Uber oh, change in the door, and they're damage. gonna force early, and they're gonna maybe get averted here. Averted is gonna get blasted back, and they're not even oh, gonna Oh, no. Yeah, Vio unable to get the frag there, and, uh, or at least the force. And Frazee's gonna die as well as they stream Scuba their way Steve is Kella. behind. Vio Actually, is multiple behind players behind. Yeah. Vio's behind, and Scuba Steve is behind to kill the players who are chasing the guy behind, and Ed has no idea. Scuba Steve's doing so much damage, he gets Ed, and it's just a hurt soldier versus Vio. Well, Zach's doing a good die. job buying his time, and Vio is gonna chase, but this is a time to kill. They blocked it's the point. They've gotten off of it. They're going back. They don't think they can win the race, and overall, the 2v2, once again, that's the second 2v2 from Rome in their favor. Vio, uh, and Vio, Vio just is gets actually, out. they think oh, yeah. he's a last. They're chasing him to last, but Vio escapes the mid. Vio and is meanwhile, just... Wonder left behind. He tried to go for a play on the Gadili, dropping down to 15 HP, but will be not be successful at collecting that meta crag. So now, we'll play fire. They're uh, they're trying to uh, go ahead and cap this up. A scumbag Steve bombing in, trying to take the Vats area, make him turn around. Frisbee trying to fall up, misses a jump, so the timing's not quite right. Scumbag Steve's gonna die, there's no fault inside the soldiers. Darty tries to go in, but oh, the slight. Uh, oh, Vio might be mechanical... fought too if they're not careful. The smallest mechanical error, Frisbee missing his window jump, unavailable to help scumbag Steve up on bat. Oh, but a 2k that... oh, dead! But the 2k dead! They'd walk through at the same time in Rome right back into things that saves them and those fresh deaths they can just dry even ubers right now 64 try to get a force and yeah, they can indeed try to get a force or at least get through the door they're gonna have a two-player advantage once those respawns get here frisbee is gonna come in and gonna get the force you know, should be a death here if uh, ed can hit one hp there we go as uh, but they're already in oh, and they're ed stuck is behind. 
And yeah. Divine is super duper caught in. He's gonna be dead. I'm just gonna see if, if Ed can. He's they still caught behind. They, they could, could play, play this, this if they want to. They do have a player behind. They have they have the players to maybe go for a collapse. They don't have the point time here, and they still have players behind. Yeah, they're trying to make some moves now. Rome, I think, realizes that yeah, it's they're, gonna they're be hard to win like, this. The, they're baiting us, but they might be a little too careful. They might have baited a little too hard, as they're going to lose too. Their yeah. medic does stay alive, so they're going to have the add, but they baited so hard in the corner that whoever was farther forward just ended up getting bumped. Yeah, the concept for Mobile is pretty good, recognizing that you know, you've got to get ready to back up and try to farm some people, but losing two in the process is not going to be good for them, obviously. So Global Gunfire trying to draw in there, able to get Frisbee, who was holding the door close, and Ed just going straight in, able to get the frag in the VO. Wonders caught Gadili trying to slip away, but will be unsuccessful. Oh, it's a new... The scout's coming in and getting frags, and the two respawners from Rome have arrived, but it is too little too late as this cap is going to go through on oh, mid. Oh, Demo might be Gunfire's caught in. Later. Wonders behind. Going he's he's going to get piped, but the Demo has two soldiers on him. That's kind of a hard task, and that's going to be a late Demo death. They committed at a spawn. As well. They did commit at a spawn. I, I don't know if they're going trying to go for something sneaky or just a miscommunication. That means there's going to be no demo at last, just a sniper to really stop things here. Two projectile classes versus the world, and now it's just four. They got their level one. Already trying to get spawned and looking at the wrong spawn door. Guys, an engineer trying to get back, unable to get there in time, but there's no gun. 95%. They're just getting the Uber for the side of Global Gun Fire, and now it's finally arrived. Pop through. Grenade across the point. Double soldier bomb onto the scout, trying to nail him down and no into point the time, grave. And no point time, though. Only one time, kill. is trapping though. the spawn door, but yeah, okay, Avert is going to get, gonna gonna get the well. medic. Uh, yeah, they went for, they went for the frags there. They said, we don't need to tease the cap to make them come to us. We see them in our sights. They go in, able to get two frags at the Uber. Averted took a person down as he died. He took down Gadili as well with the trap kill. So uh, yeah. they they have, they definitely knew their plan to victory there, and they've tied up the game one-to-one. -one. It was a little sloppy there, I'd say, from the side of GCF, but in the end, they kind of coalesced. I feel like they just kind of started death-balling, essentially. They just, just you know... Rome got kind of on the feed train where they just kept feeding one, then two, then one, then two again, and they just kind of did that all the way from last to last. Oh, the deal is really weak at the very beginning. But, but then again, him, him playing passive uh, was the, the strat so far for the side of Rome. Scuba Steve's going to go for a bomb in on Divine. There's the Divine one, heading some the nice troops, both soldiers on him, but can only dodge so many rockets there. Is they're going to get Divine. Fire. He almost gets a Gadili solo. There was no follow. Oh, Gadili might be no caught in though, and he, oh, he's caught in the corner, and that's going to be a Gadili kill. Unable to escape because the demo man, and it's no medics here, but Big Twenty One going to end up feeding a lot of other players. And it's still behind. He's going to one v three. He's going to one v three. This no, Dart. He gets him with eight HP. Gets the one shot needed. But... I, I, Ed almost had that. If Ed gets one shot off there, that's a that's a one v three. And the big difference the big difference is the coordination for these mids when you see rome go in trying to they're obviously both teams are going for the medics at this point when you see rome go in trying to get divine it's two players on divine like back uh, back to back yeah for they Global did a good job fire, that's not the case yeah they staggered it correctly so it wasn't like one player died one player went in and as they shot the other player then the other soldier it makes all the difference but Rome gonna try to spam mid, and they're actually walking through the doors you see a demo through the door but via was you know 20 hp trying so to just live and there is a lot of her players here. Meanwhile, Sax is gonna fall, but Steve, Steve gonna fall as well. I see a see more high ground from the side of uh, GCF. Wonder gonna be standing tall on the high ground. So is a uh, Fancy Sun as. This is not looking great for Rome just with the health. And they have the Uber now. They're just chasing these three frags. They even want the medic. They want Frisbee and they want Darty. They're trying to chase them down over onto two. Ed's going for the kill. Ed is so be able to get it and the Uber finally comes out. This is so good from the side of Global Gunfire. Recognizing one, the player ad that Ed created at the very end of the mid fight when they wanted two, the ad created when Divine died so much earlier than the side of Gadilia to give them this Uber to use to, to get three take two. And just taking advantage of the positioning and now they're just pushing they're just in the trying last, to drive recognizing to the Uber. there's no escape. They know they Force it now. There's Wait, no Ed's on last. There's they, no they just knocked Ed to chase. Last. They can't go either he direction. They get the spawn. The Timmy two Frizzy almost dies as well. He's three HP resupping and play after play after play, recognizing the smallest advantages. They're literally face first, and Zax with the timing on oh, Gadili. The pack's not there, or it is, but he's not quite to it, and is able to secure the medic frag. And now they're starting to really heat up the bullpen fire. They really got the fire within them tonight. Yeah, I, you can see Ed is definitely came up the to plate tonight, running around, just getting kills when he has no business getting some of those kills, killing players in spawn doors, getting almost, you know, getting two Ks, a lot of big plays happening, but they're going to lose a scout to the traps. That's going to put a little bit of a wrench in the works. They're going to back up, but they, the Uber is so big that they can just back up, wait for their scout and then push again. Yeah, Darty is on Sniper though, so the first shot could be pretty dangerous. He's over in Cheese right now, so if they go, oh, we just showed his dot. I don't know if anyone saw that. 
I think they didn't see it, otherwise they probably wouldn't be saw. Maybe they want to use it to just kill him. But the, oh, oh, no, they, they, they saw him, they're going to use yeah, to kill him. Saw. But averted... Oh, MIG? 21 HP? Oh, Darn there's a 7 the HP demo. Oh, these, these kills might come really quickly. If they know this demo's hurt, this could be over. Oh, well, they're going to get two at least and getting two players from Uber. This isn't the worst thing in the world. They're just going to kind of try to stream into last. Still 50% left to build this Uber. So... Yeah. They have a dry fight in them, and, and they're, they're gonna get a, just a stray pipe gonna kill uh, the demo. That's gonna make it three players pretty hard to fail, especially if he's not watching a door. Good bait, he's getting people over, the doors are free, Scumbag Steve's gonna die off the play from Fancy Sun, overall one for one trade. Kajic plugged and he's a little bit deep, wants to go in as well, but uh, it's gonna be oh, the play from Zach, that might be the nail in the coffin. Also unable to really find what they need, so the core no, they from got the, the side force. of GCF, I mean, they get the force. I feel like Ed got a little baited like, there. Yeah, it seems like there's the coordination's a little bit sloppy, but they're still getting the job done, at least for now. Wonder in over towards VO near the cheese side, trying to, you know, post around a little bit and see if he can get some damage, maybe even a free kill before this Uber happens. Unsuccessful, but they're fine. They still have the Uber in their pocket. Frisbee jumps forward a little bit, doesn't quite come in, and this Uber's just streamlining forward. Averted jumps forward to try to catch people out, but so far, Rome. Everyone's so weak. Oh, they get the demo. Right, there we go. There's the demo. That's enough you can push off that. It was almost going to be no one, but no one really locking uh -oh, out these doors. Shot. Soldier, Wonder, 7 HP in the air gets pistol dips down, but Scumbag Steve will fall as well. Nice, but it's on nice top ball. of the truck. They're, They're taking so, so much damage. Darty dies inside spawn to a roller as everyone else resets. Frisbee left alone as they rotate to the other side of spawn. It's two people versus the world. The scout gets melted down, and Global Clan Fire take the cap, leading the game 2 to 1. Yeah, some huge bomb there on last by one of the GCF soldiers, getting so much damage that players just ended up dying to other, you know. Sometimes the bomb, you don't get the kills, and but the damage and the impact can be seen. That was definitely one of those circumstances. Nice little uh, comeback here from GCF after the initial kind of disastrous first round. I feel like they've really heated up just in the DM and the swing of things. Yeah, so far, I think, as we go into this pause, I think both teams have done a, you know, they've, they've, shown what the the mid strategy is going to be the mid strategy this match so far is kill the medic i think for the most part rome has actually done a pretty good job at showing their their coordination um but global Clan fire has done a much better job showing their ability to punish when they see a little bit of an yeah. opening i think when it comes to following up rome is like on top of things i don't think i've seen a single like oh no this was only one person in a, uh, a situation that was like uh up to them like I saw the one like, oh, the, he missed his jump, so he couldn't follow up. But I mean, like, you know, intent type of deal. Well, Global Clone Fire is the opposite, uh, where, you know, it seems like they're kind of on the same page, but there's a little bit of lag when it comes it's to more the player coming in. Yeah, but it's more kind of like, it looks more loose, I think. Not the, they see more of these it. openings in the first place. And they're also, when they get one of those up. openings, they are all holding W and streaming mm -hmm. forward. It's definitely like a full team effort, like, oh, hey, get in, get in, get in. Whereas uh, Roma feels like more, like, at least a little... Uh, they're doing everything. Everything they're doing feels almost like pre-planned in terms of like, okay, we're going to do this. Like everything's practiced. Yeah. So both teams have some small things to patch up, but uh, with this pause, I'm not sure if it's tech or attack. I don't. I feel like it wouldn't. Probably not attack quite yet. I mean, it's been pretty back and forth. I guess it is the halfway point of the match. So if you wanted yeah. to attack, you could. It's not like your either team's getting really rolled. If you want to really talk about like a mid fight or something to get you in the right spot, but uh, we'll see. I'm. I. I I don't have a, a big reason to believe, like, I think if anyone changes anything about the mid, it's going to be Global Clan Fire. I feel like Rome are probably okay with how they played the mid so far, because they've been successful at killing Divine, and they've been pretty successful at uh, overall winning the mid, for the most part. And then, But the side of Global Clan Fire, I feel like their their coordination to keep, either coordinate really well, or uh, have Divine die is a thing. Like, the first time we saw them, they were on top of things in terms of shooting the same target, but it left Divine really exposed. Other times, they've tried to, like, play passive and support Divine and keep them alive, but it just ends up not mattering, and then they go in, like, trying to salvage, and it's not, you know, people aren't at the same pace, because it's, like, very impromptu. It's like the, oh no, my medic died, I guess I have to go in now, but, like, people aren't ready. So it ends up being, like, dominoes. So I feel like if we see any, like, mid-fight differences, it's gonna be Global Clan Fire, but who yeah. knows? I, I'm glad Dolphin immediately honed in on who has like the dumbest loadout on the server, which I really like. Shout out to Scuba Steve there with the impressive dumb loadout. This is just a good pause, like in general. Look at like both scouts on red are literally in like the exact same frame of their running animation. Scuba Steve's just in the air, like you know, trying to pedal on the oxygen. Oh, there they go. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Yeah. 
Which is the, that, was a, that was a very good moment. But, uh, they're going to be able to get into mid. Uh, we're going to get a nice bow as we're. Looks like we're about to see some soldier aggression. The yeah, they're going to scoop a team in, and there comes, here comes the follow up bomb. But no. They're able to find their target. Divine baited them inside Saw, and they didn't chase whatsoever. They landed in pretty oh, much the same a spot. Oh, this from Wonder as well. Yeah, able to get the frags onto Darty and Vio. So only two left alive, Gadili and Frisbee. Frisbee trying to buy some time, but uh, we'll surely die here. Gadili trying to run away, yeah. but Gadili caught alone. Off no, but they're actually, oh, they're leaving him alive. Yeah, actually, they left him alive, which I do like a little bit of a delayed spawn there. A nice little 18 second spawn on the medic. Not even capping mid until just now, but if Luberad, they got time and they got a lead in the match. So, uh, GCF can't afford to, you know, take this slow and make the other team really kind of sit and sweat this one out. Yeah, Divine did a really good job of recognizing that it's the same thing every time. One, the Rome soldiers do not fake. If they're in the air, they're landing. Two, they land on Divine. Three, they land on your face and don't land behind you at all. So as soon as he saw Soldier Airborne, he just hooked it into Saw, and uh, they were unable to really get onto him. Their coordination from Rome was not there. There was no two soldiers on Divine like last time. So Divine able to live, the soldiers die, and then it just kind of came to completion for the side of Global Clan Fire from there, but they have the Uber ready, they're through they're the shutter, they've yeah. lost one despite, you know, it, you know, Sack's dead, but uh, Oh, they have no one to block this. They, uh, they just, the, the Sticky's got one of them, but there are two people on the point, so nice little cap there from, I believe, those Fancy Sun, and then Rome pauses, possibly attack. That's yeah. probably attack. Yeah, that's probably attack, especially after using that run. Ten Maybe minutes they'll, left. They'll yeah, probably yeah. come in with a new mid strat, I feel like, since they got hard counter that last minute, as you correctly pointed out. They, it it you know. could be the same strategy if they really if they want to be stubborn about it and the soldiers just land differently, like if one lands Saw and the other lands Cat, so Divine goes and Saw and still dies, but they could just change it up entirely. We'll have to see. I uh, got the stickies streaming out. I think one of the scouts got hit by the ornament, but, uh, you know, so far, it's... Uh, Godilly's taking some damage. They're committing, finally, on oh, the high ground. Oh, they're bombing the high ground. Sax is the one that's really weak, and it's going to be both soldiers dying to fall damage after colliding on top of the log area. Ooh, Scuba Steve's behind die. just running around, and he actually lives a little bit of beef there. As both <laughs> a lot of Rome players. I noticed that the previous couple mids that GCF had a lot more high ground control just in general because the soldiers were too, too busy bombing and they can Rome is a, a generally passive team like besides yeah. their their bombs the one thing that's the probably the same from the previous season that they played is a uh, they they're totally fine with sitting back and trying to spam and seeing if they can play off the spam before they go in for anything and yeah, they, they they bombed the high ground and got got the players who were just shooting down raining havoc on their players which I, is a good call to the one that we have Vio hiding in a corner here yeah. love to see He's, it that yeah that's a bit of an ambitious corner averted i think he kill just him got probably. checked no averted like just checked it and i don't think he got a hit sound because Vio's still there he's not even getting both. he got a hit sound but he probably didn't realize it's in the corner but mig's gonna die ed just in percy just went in to kill the medic and oh, now he good kills force, the demo good force. Vio, Vio is able to get the force coming in from behind so good play from him. I didn't expect that to work, honestly, but uh, just barely did. <laughs> yeah, you, I don't think you expected that to work either. Yeah, so I think he, he thought he, he had, was He kind of had to commit to that one. Yeah, if he tried to leave, it could have been really bad. But yeah. they're trying to use this two-player advantage. Saxophone going. Yeah, they got a trying to get the point. We did nice little have almost yet. two rocket. Oh, 16 health, 12 health on the side of a. Uh, he's eight. God. Oh my god. Oh, they he's so hurt, but he has it. to commit here. He has to get this pack. He's going to get the pack, but he could still be in so much danger. There it goes. Yeah, there was nowhere to go there. If he tried to leave, he just gets nuked in the doorway by yeah, the soldier. It's, it's the difficult thing because if you even if you back up to bats, you're in pistol range. You hit two pistol shots on him and he dies. So he kind of had to go for the pack. But I mean, it's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I don't think there was a way he could have realistically like. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the only way after, you live there is to like you hide the behind pack, the box. A, yeah, after you get the pack, hide behind the box maybe. But yeah. otherwise, it was pretty rough there for him. Or just like he drops so low. even lower. Yeah, at that point you're just baiting your team's hard, but you're know, gonna be on sniper, gonna try to make something happen. Is a, uh, I feel like Rome started out this match so well, but it, it just kind of slowly slipping away from them. There's they, no gun in this full ad. Yeah, there is no Rome gun in this full ad. They do have no a sniper. Heavy, there's no gun. What's? They, they have a sniper. You know, the sniper's gonna hit a lot of shots, but they're going in lower, so the sniper can't see anything. Oh, body shot of murder. That's pretty good. That yeah, is pretty good. Baiting but frisbee. Ni over. Nice, nice point. Uh, blocking there, but frisbee's gonna fall. They're actually gonna get oh, Ed, and they're gonna get the. Uh, so both scouts dead, and Wonder's gonna get shot. Means that that was actually the most successful last pull they had so far. No gun. Yeah. No gun needed. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Oh, now we have another player, another quarter hider. And he yeah, gets a back Steve going in for Divine, able to secure that frag. Dying. That's a full Yeah, that... I think... 
usually it's really important to have like a gun or a heavy to you know kind of they expected one. Bring, you know, the, the, well you, you want to make sure they were looking you, for the gun you want them it. to be distracted so they don't immediately go for a player or an objective immediately and they try to immediately go ahead and start the cap but uh i think At maybe a sniper. little bit of an execution error from the side of global clan fire and made it uh them take way too much damage i mean losing both scout that's that's something i mean yeah. one scout one scout teases the point maybe accidentally eats a sticky or like gets bombed and the flashes come through whatever but if you lose both scouts that's a bit of an execution error it's uber coming out from the side of rome they're on to wonder maybe sax will die as well but no averted he's able to get the sticky on the veal and the there's a blue ends. soldier behind as well this could be a disaster for rome if they are careful they're gonna be looking backwards trying to get Gonna get this scout, but Darty is gonna get out DM'd by Sax for now. And Sax is still behind, and Wonder? there's so many of her role players. Oh, nice, nice shot, shot from, from that as well. Yeah, and this the late sticky coming from Averted to make sure Darty dies as well. It's just two players alive, and uh, they're stream rolling for her. They gotta get out of here. Adili, he's trying to escape, but Sax don't try to cut him off. He does die to VO, able to get Adili out at 26 nice HP, attempt, but uh, overall, still have the foot loop from Global Clan Fire. And they're still you down get three. Mid for free. You don't block out any of the forward respawns. I mean, if you want to wait for Sax, you know, it kind of makes Uber dwindle a little bit, but they're pretty much ready to be on the move. Just have to be mindful yeah. of the Darty Sniper, who came out of forwards unseen as of so far, and is in lobby looking towards lower. Yeah, he's kind of in a, he's kind of in cheese, but not really. He's going for, like, the, the sneaky angle where people are going to be already in. And oh, and Steve that. dies. He just Steve dies, dies of all damage. Oh, he, oh, he got air shot. Oh, he got air shot? No wonder. Second. Oh my god, so... Kind of a brutal one there, is they're not even gonna have a second defense, gonna move back to last. Unfortunate yeah. for Steve. The only thing for Rome, though, is you, you can say at least, like, you know, even though you didn't force them, at least you still have an Uber of your own. You know, you could have lost it, you could have lost so many players. Uh, but they're fine for now, but this, you know, bomb coming in, able to trade one for one, get the sniper out of the equation, Wonder trying to follow up, will die and stuff at the door, because pretty much everyone's over on this right-hand side. I do not think Global Clone Fire were ex expecting, like, a five-man stack over on that one doorway, but it definitely, uh, paid in dividends for the side of Rome as they're bombing in, counters that coming in, Divine, surfing over to the pack, takes it immediately, is A-OK, -okay, is... Uh, the sack, I mean, the counter sack, it's not that late, it's fine for the most part, but they still have no gun. You know, if they don't hold these doors perfectly, if Global Clone Fire is able to find one opening, this could be it for, uh, their ability to crack at this last open. Last time it was the gun that was giving him so much trouble, so I'm surprised we don't see I'm it, but immediately, Sax and Averted Wombo combo on a VO scumbag, he following as well. They have to give up all Ed the doors, Ed is just Look in. He's Will gonna fall, but he made a lot of space. Wonder is gonna make half the backup. He's pretty hurt. That actually might signal the retreat here. But he realize they are pretty hurt. So nice attempt. They're gonna end up trading two for two, but unable to get in too far. But Ed, Ed, I saw like Ed, and I was expecting the horrors for Rome, but they ended up killing him just in time. Yeah, and for how chaotic that was, now you finally see the engineer. Maybe yeah. they delay a bit because they think that the sack's gonna happen now. So like. Vio can't afford to go back and swap to engineer because he'll be running back to spawn building it and then like yeah maybe and then and then the sack will come in so they just like cut their losses and hold the door uh, but, point, but had now, the engineer there already for, just have, right. always have an engineer well, they, last. Had to, they had to back up from two so maybe that was the the you know they're play, playing if you always have an sorry. engineer at last you can't lose I'm sure there's plenty of times where someone has like gone back to the spa and they're like, I'm going to go off class and then that's when they get to the door that, but that has happened to me personally yeah the gun <laughs> is up I have they're trying to spam it. Look Everyone. how aggressive Rome are on the doors. They're like pretty. I feel like they're doing a pretty good job playing in front of the sentry gun instead of behind it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's teams make they, that mistake. They have averted with as the I combo say that now. they don't watch one of the doors. They have averted with the combo now to try to help, so Scumbag Steve can't be as close to the door to hurt Wonder. But they really need more damage onto that gun to get it. Not just a single soldier. Dart is able to get Ed, so no escape there. Wins the SBS this time around. Is Looking for a counter, maybe? Frisbee going and getting some damage on a Sax. Actually is going to potentially commit, but will get bombed by the side of Wonder. Gets the final rock on him. Sax is probably fuming right in. now. Uh, but he's just in. in. Hello? He thinks he's Miracle that guy. Shot. Darty is not he, that guy. He is not him, at least not yet. Yeah, not him. Nice try. Could have been potentially in the frag video, but not in the frag video. Just, you know, unfortunate. Nice attempt. You miss every like, shot you don't take. Yeah, you miss. Hey. I, you, you gotta, if you have the opportunity, you gotta go for those. I'm gonna teleport her down, huge pick, as a, oops, somebody almost got, uh, Scuba Steve got a little air shot out of that, but that's fine as they're getting a lot of pressure on the gun, but uh, Vio is doing his best to just keep it up. I think yeah, a lot of engineer gun whacking. 
And one was gonna die, peeked through lower, and uh, had no beam on him, so just two rocket devices to come back. See, you really need two people on the gun at the exact same time. And it, I guess sometimes it can be hard to do that from different doors. Counter stack does not work from the side of Scumbag Steve. There should be Still, one less spamming class, but Wonder Dad means that the other team is also down a spamming class. I feel like they need an off class with just... I, I'm watching the way that uh, Rome is playing these doors, and I don't know if they're going to have the opportunity to spam here unless they like really aren't thorough about clearing it out. I think they need to They move the gun class. too. It's over by the crate by yeah. drop down, so it's not even centralized. But they're going to get 30 though. That's a pretty die. good start. Zax is gonna be very hurt, but the demo's caught to the core inside the dispenser. They're gonna get Ed, but you know, 14 in. seconds left. They can go. They're gonna get the force. Yeah, around the corner. Unable to lock things down. Uber exchange There's overall, but they've lost people though. And Wonder's on spy, so this is gonna be a. Uh, he has to decook by the truck. The gun is is still able to shoot them a little bit. They're on the cap though. They're in the corner. They're streamlining over. Wonder gets the stab. He gets on the stab. Oh, the cap so doesn't close. go through. There's so much cap time, but it's only Divine left alive. We're rolling out and. Oh uh, man, that was almost that was almost good from the side of Global Fun Fire, but moving the, the gun pretty clutch, and oh, Darty starting the cap. That could be a and mistake, Ed, but Ed they're all the just setting on it. They're, yeah, they know. I, 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 just think, saw... I think if Blue Team... Blue Team should honestly... Do you, yeah, I, I was going to say, do you let Darty cap that? <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah, no, not with that Uber Descent. Especially not now. Not, yeah, yeah, not that Uber Descent, but... Yeah, Darty's starting the cap, but that is going to be a round reset, which Rome seems content with. They, they seem fine with the reset, but... We are quickly approaching overtime, which means that uh, Global Clan Fire just needs one more round to win it, whereas Rome kind of has to fall the way back into this. Yep, first to four. And I, I start my genie arc if Global Clan Fire uh, get this round win. Ah, true. The the perfect Fred arc. Mm -hmm. It's in the script. But yeah, uh, is that Quickie Bomb from Averted, or am I like seeing things? Am I uh... dumb? No, I, I think I'm I see an invisible thing. sticky launcher. No, so I don't yeah, see anything. Yeah, mine's just... invisible too. I think I'm just saying things. But <laughs> they're finally the getting the double bomb comes in. They're going on to the scouts. They're just separating. Oh, they're trying to find a target. They a can't new... find anyone. Literally all of Rome. I see three people from wondered. Rome in, and they're all looking around. They finally find Divine, but that's that start. I mean, they, they just from exploded. How, from how quickly they dropped and exploded, and no one on Global Clan Fire died until the very end. You could just see, like bird's eye view. I'm looking at both soldiers and a scout that took height. And they're all frantically searching around and finding different people. They did not. I guess maybe they wanted to like find they someone all top right. Across, or, but I, I think don't know. That they just kind of got collapsed on when they walked across. Because they all walked across on the low ground and just kind of got pulled. And yeah, they're trying to fight this off with the fact that they know they that get a blue 2K. Team, they know that blue team doesn't have heals, so they're trying to fight this like that. This is a good idea, like on paper from the side of Rome. Like, yeah, divine's rolling out. Let's fight too. But they lose three and don't get a single crack to their name. The execution, very, very poor there. And with three down, and they get a long spot. it might just be, for, like, Global Clone Fire in the bag right now. Like, they're holding down this top right, but Ed and Sax oh, are just we have a for free. They get scum, yeah, they get scumbag Steve. I mean, Vio's on Brass Beast Heavy, so he'll be a little tanky. You know, near the tail end of things, put, pumping out some damage if they try to dry. It's going to be pretty hard for them. But I think Global Clone Fire, they... They're content with two. They've recognized that, you know, they probably shouldn't have gotten two in the first place, so they'll take it. They don't necessarily need last as well, but actually they're seeing an opening. they able to get Frisbee. Overall, it's just one for one trade, and the Stiggies will catch out Fancy Sun, so trying to be a bit greedy, pushing the envelope. I think it's good to recognize that the Heavy is unable to rotate, so you see them on, see them on one side of the map. Sure, try to go for Frags on the other. They're not going to be able to really help or catch, but... Uh, no, you know, wasn't really quite there as Scumbag Steve going behind. Oh, it's gets multiple. Yeah. Ed. Yeah, it just immediately takes that threat down. He's so. going behind with like 100 HP, so mm -hmm. wasn't destined for success probably to begin with. But Fancy again, Rome, Rome are still on last, and GCF had had trouble with some of these. Like you know, like you said, breaking the stalemates hasn't been their forte so far. They've yeah. tried actual last pushes, but the stalemate breaking has not been up to task. We'll have to see what the uh, what kind of strategies they can bring out. And yeah, the Fancy Sun Sniper might be a good start. And I'm surprised that Darty's still on heavy with the Fancy Sun Sniper being in he play can't right get one now. Shot. Oh yeah, but I mean, you can't actually block the sniper from peeking. He's just peeking dropping right now. He, he took a shot. No one's punishing him. Finally, Frisky's coming over, but the force has come through. Unable to really hold the doors probably, especially with the Dome and as a late frag and Global Gun Fire. I mean, this is a good opportunity for them. Got the full Uber. This two-man work. The the sniper is able to to buy some room to make them kind of scared. And he's actually, Fancy Sun's going back. He's going to ask Ed to hold the door open so he can go back on scout. I actually do think this is one of the last fights you can, if you want to. You don't have to. It's pro it's better to push it without a sniper, but this is one of the last points I think you can push with a sniper. I think it's doable with that. You can. It's like, 
process is another one where like all the doors have really good angles into their spawn so you can see like you can block off pretty much the entire map if you don't get bombed which you probably are but you know, that's just the way it crumbles Uber in tow. Darty and Sniper, VO on Engineer, they got the defense set up over- There are four people over by the dispenser over the spawn, but they're gonna go in and get the sentry That's an immediately, instant death for and Frisbee, Frisbee jumps in. There's no one on the flank, he just dies immediately, and the other soldier going in. Getting both soldiers as your first two frags, who's gonna block the cap? A scout just immediately mounts, and 4-1 will be the scoreline. A victorious game for Global Clan Fire versus Rome. Jared, you might be psychic. Maybe a little bit. Well, Jared apparently read the script. I, uh, may have- Slack did not read the script as, like Jared said, a nice 4-1 for the side of Global Clan Fire. So Rome did get around, but not enough to get the dub as overall, I think a pretty, other than some, you know, the little hiccups here and there, overall pretty good showing for GCF, I think showing that they're dominance uh, overall. Mm -hmm. Realistically, all you know, I think it's it makes sense for both sides, like both teams having like a little thing or two that is not refined quite yet and you know still trying to nail it down. You know, you had the couple weeks where scrims are probably hard to get because people are traveling for the land, you know, you shake up your roster, there's maybe some dynamics that you need to like refine still. You know, it'll take a, at least half a season to get that stuff down for all the maps. Who knows how long, you know, both these teams have played Snakewater over the past month. Uh so even though it is a stable map. But uh only one other correct score guesser. Oh, who was it? The mother oh. fucker. <laughs> we're we're both uh, we're in sync right now. Good the job, full one on lock. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty straightforward game for the side of Global Clan Fire. Rome definitely had some pushback, able to get that round. They showed they had signs of promise as well in other aspects. Just wasn't quite enough to actually lead to the round conversions. But uh, are you promising showing? I think for the rest of the season for both these teams, for Global Clan Fire to see if they have what it takes to you know, get an even better record than their previous season. And then Sanku, we said for Rome. So I'm excited to see how things progress because we're, this is like a, a week one match. Like we're technically in week three, but uh, barely any of the games have been played because of yeah. the land, land travel and, and stuff. stuff. So this is like still the, the early, like first, like first one or two weeks for a lot of these teams playing and they still don't have everything down. They're still showing a lot of growth. Got the stats up so you can see, you know, who was kind of leading the charge and everything. Both roamers have a very, very sad stat line, and both the demos are, roamer. are farming in the stalemates. But uh, Fancy Sun with a 31 and 9. No, that's that's pretty good. Generally, you want to get a lot more kills than deaths, and I, I think Fancy Sun, uh, you can see, he was, I, you know, getting all those nice little soldier kills. You, you can see if there's sad soldiers on one side, usually one of the scouts said is quite happy, and uh, Fancy Sun getting all those soldier kills is. Also averted with the nice 332 there on Snake Water demo. Just, I didn't see him like super in like nuking everything, but I think he was getting those solid just like 50s across the map, you know. Mm -hmm. Consistent damage and then making sure that you pestered good enough during the, the stalemates and stuff like that. So definitely makes sense. But uh, oh, just the little things when it comes to the stats, small DPM discrepancies and some, you know, one of, one of the scouts dying a little bit more. One of the demos dying a little bit more, just small things like that. But overall, Global Clan Fire, like I said before, cliche, but pretty much on fire for now. So we'll see how things go when they have tougher opponents. We saw them play Freddy Tech before. They almost had a victory on that. Granted, Freddy Tech had a bit of a weird roster. They, uh, you know, they have some other matches upcoming. I think in the next week or two or so, there are going to be other playoff teams as well, or at least playoff projected. Uh, I think they're playing their sister team soon, so that should be pretty hype. We'll see how uh, that comes down and who is going to be the the more dominant global clan team. So uh, a lot in store. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. Um, on that note, I don't think we're doing any interviews. I don't see anyone coming in yeah, for the interview, so. which is fine. I've, uh, I've been casting a while. But uh, any other notes, Jared? No, I don't think so. Just the time to go over the shout out phase. Any any final thoughts for the stream? Shout outs in particular? Uh, shout out to you know, both teams playing a good match. Shout out to Ed. Always love seeing Ed. Uh, aka our good friend KJ Quad. Um, shout out to the merch. Check out the merch if you can. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Definitely shout out to both the teams for playing, especially Global Clan Fire. So they're you know the victors and the previous team I was playing on. Obviously, yeah. Shout out to the merch shop. .gg, seasonal merch. You got some time. Also, the team merch as well. That's gonna be a new thing. Uh, pretty sure there'll be team merch for most of, if not all the teams so it's going to be pretty hype as we go in and, and see the designs throughout uh, the course of all the casted matches and of course 
last but not least, shout out to everyone who hung out and watched with us, especially those who, you know, did the whole marathon run from when Highlanders started to play earlier tonight. Uh, it was uh, quite the long TF2 sesh, but we hope it was worth it. But uh, it has been a long night, a very long Monday. Got a couple matches in the works. I think we are casting, what is it, like two Friday Witness tomorrow? Gaming? Two Witness Gaming matches. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday. One is versus Froyo, I think, on Tuesday, and then the other one, I think, is versus uh, FGP, who are a advanced move-up team trying to, you know, get their name in and uh, an invite. And I think they already had a, a decent victory. Like they, I think, they beat Global Clan Ice, and which I I would call an upset, but who knows? Maybe they're just goaded, and you know, they're the best. <laughs> maybe, so, maybe so we'll they see. Are just goaded. So those should be that should be pretty exciting. You get to see you know who's on top between Froyo Tech and Witness Gaming, and then you get to see the uh, debut of FGP after you know they got a victory that a lot of people probably you know wouldn't give them credit for, wouldn't expect. You can see what their uh, their prowess is like if you weren't really watching Advanced for, uh, very much uh, in the previous season as they make their invite debut for a lot of them. So a lot in store for the upcoming days, but for tonight. We are done. That'll be it from us. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Jarrett Casting with Space Ghost with Dolphin on production. Thank you and good night. Good night.